Hi everyone, Fixit Scotty here. Last month I posted a video titled Chevy Volt Brakes and Wheel Hub Replacement for the Stabilitrack issue. In that video, I replaced the front passenger wheel hub and tab washer to fix a check engine light. Well, it turns out that I posted that video too soon because that P25A2 error code and check engine light returned after about a week. I considered taking that previous video down, but a Chevy Volt tech told me that they would have replaced those parts as part of the fix as well. So the information I gave in that last video is accurate. I just missed one additional part. So this video shows you how to replace that last piece of the system, the ABS sensor. So hopefully that will take care of the problem for good. So stick around and find out how I did it. Okay, let's start with the preparation here. First of all, the part which I bought, which this is the ABS sensor and it also includes the cabling that uh, with for that sensor and the part number here is 39124497 and again this is for the 2016 volt so I guess that'd be the gen 2 I don't know if that is same for the 2017 18 but uh, same prep work that I did in the first video I chalked the back wheel for safety and I just jacked up the passenger side and remove the the wheel I didn't put it on jack stands because this will be a pretty quick fix I believe so the ABS sensor if you watch my last video is actually inside so we replaced this hub right this piece here and we also did a full brake job on the last video but I don't have to take all this apart again to get to this hub because the sensor you can access it from the back side here so this should be a much quicker operation so here's the bolt and here's the cabling it comes up into here we have to unclip it from here and then from what I've seen there's also you have to pull out clips from behind this shielding here and then it'll go up into the firewall and into the car so I'll show you that in a moment It's actually a 10 millimeter bolt, so I got myself a socket with an extension and a 10 millimeter. And I'm just going, going to go ahead and take off that bolt and we'll pull the sensor out and see how it looks. And here's the bolt. And we'll just pull sensor out here there it is now there is another YouTube video out there that shows somebody fixing their car that has a similar stability track issue by just replacing this so I not doing anything groundbreaking here as far as the YouTube video but somebody has already shown how to do this this is actually the probably the easiest part of fixing this issue but when I saw the video of that gentleman doing this replacement, which fixed his, the problem for him, his problem was a little more obvious. Um, when, if you see my last video, I showed the, the hub. When you take out the hub, the rotor and the hub, um, you'll see there was a tabbed washer that I also replaced, and that's also documented in my video. His tabbed washer, once he broke it down, was actually broken inside there. That broken tab washer, the centrifugal force in, in the uh, turning it, actually caused it to damage the sensor. You could actually see damage on the sensor. So it was kind of a no-brainer for him to replace this, this piece due to that. Now, when if you look at my last video, you saw that my tab washer was intact. It was just rusty, so I just went ahead and replaced it. So I have no reason to think that this sensor uh, was also the problem, you know, a, a cause to my problem, so I didn't think to replace it. Well now, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and try that and hope that, that you know, it's part of the, the issue as well. Uh, so we're going to do that now. So now that I have it out, all I have to do now is do basically what that other gentleman said, is just to pull um, it out from these various clips. So this first one you can just struggle and pry it off. So now we have it this far. I'm going to get a small screwdriver that allows me to pry and open up this clip and I can pull that that uh, that clip out and we'll just kind of go up until we get into the engine compartment. Oh, 
So the next, the next clip is behind here. I think it'd be good to take this body clip out to give this panel a little more wiggle room. And it looks like we do that with a little, yeah, a little, these look like torque screws. So I'm gonna get my torque screw set, see if I can take that out. Two different ways you can, torque screw drivers you can use. I've got this, this, uh, Craftsman T15 Torx screwdriver. Uh, it's a little on the small side and I can't really get a whole lot of purchase on this screw uh, to turn it out. So I'm gonna go with my, I also have a set of these Torx 3H bits for a socket wrench which probably will go better. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that. There we go. Back out of the way a little bit. Yeah, so we can get to this clip here. So I'm realizing that most of these, that the clip points here include the clips as well, even that bigger one. So I guess I don't have to be as gentle with these clips as I thought because I can just re uh, push in new ones and replace them. So. Probably just get in here and just really just rip it right out and then I'll be replacing these as well and then there's one up in here this one right here so I'll go ahead and tear that out and then we'll see uh, where it, where to get it from the engine bay okay I brought you up quite a bit higher on my stand here and we're on the again we're on the passenger side of the engine bay and where I want to focus on, it's going to be hard to show you, but it's right next to the air cleaner, right here. It's this cable here, going through there, and it clips in right here. So I just need to remove it from this clip, and then I can pull it, pull it the rest of the way through there. Well, in order to get this part loose from here, this harness loose from here, it, all you have to really do is look at the, the new part here. Let me go ahead and take the part out of this packaging. So here's the end of the new part. You can see it comes with the clip that was holding this, this in. And you can see that underneath here, if you pry up on this, so if I'm looking at it from the top, I'm, I get my screwdriver underneath this from the top, I was able to pry it off the clip. So I could push this thing back onto the existing clip or I can try to get that existing clip out. The existing clip looks fine, so I'll probably just take it off here and slide this one on the clip that's already on the body. From there, again, you look at how this thing looks. It clips on like this and then it goes into this harness that goes to the computer. Well, this harness obviously clips onto this piece here so I think the way to do that is you push it in, which frees it up, and you should be able to pull this apart. So here's our old part. Now, make sure we don't lose this harness. I'm gonna kinda keep the harness kinda trapped down here. And we'll, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this part, the old part, through the firewall. So here's the old one, and now we're gonna go ahead and just feed the sensor end of this back through here where it came. I think it, I think it would almost fit through there. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, this fits through. So either way, whether you feed this up from underside or feed this down, 
just go ahead and feed it down and then we'll go ahead and clip it together. Let's go back to the brake area. All right, well you guys are, if you're watching this video and you're fixing this yourself, you're smart enough to, to know that uh, whatever you took out, just put back in as you as you uh, had it. Um, the only thing I'll just, just uh, tell you beforehand is just that you don't need to be nice to these clips. We can just go ahead and brute force just yank the old plastic ones out because like I said, we don't, um, the new one comes with all these clips and so we'll just be putting all new ones in so just use brute force and and you can just rip these clips right out of the metal and then we'll go ahead like i said and just get all the same all the same sensor locations clipped in as they were before there this one was here this one was here. Now we'll go ahead and bolt this in. We'll see what happens. Now for the follow-up. I made sure I waited a couple weeks and drove it a few hundred miles before posting this video to not repeat the same mistake as last time. You'll be happy to know that the code stayed cleared and the check engine light never came back on. In addition, I took it to the state inspection office and it passed there as well and I got my new sticker. So all is good. I would suggest if you have the same problem, go ahead and watch both of my videos, the previous and this one, and go ahead and just do all three parts at the same time. It's about $100 total for the parts, 80 for the hub, five for the washer, 15 for the sensor. So it just makes sense to just do them all at one time. Well, if this video is a help for you, please leave a super thanks or a like on it and subscribe to my channel for more great content. We'll see you next time. Thanks.